greatest American alive. <laughs> the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. Project Daddy in the motherfucking building. Hands up, hands up to the goddamn ceiling. The greatest American alive. You, not me. I'm just a piece of shit out here trying to motherfucking fight on your behalf. Why? Who's the enemy? Where's the enemy? There are mechanisms that exist that create perpetual poverty for the American citizen. They are trying to criminalize and demonize the American citizen. They are trying to come after you, the greatest American alive. They pass laws every day. You're one law away from being incarcerated. Incarceration motherfucking nation. They're coming. That's just one mechanism they use to siphon off the money from the American person. When they say that you're going to jail, that creates inherent value for the American person. You're worth something whether you're doing something or not. You don't have to do shit for them to put an ascribe a value to you. And so, how do you stand up against such an oppressive force? What are your tools? When they have mechanisms and tools, what are your mechanisms and tools? Man, say, fuck you. <laughs> Number one, you stand up for yourself and you declare your ownership, not only of yourself in the physical form because you is free, but also in the digital form because you should own your digital essence too. whatever your impression is on the Internet and to whatever digital realm going on into perpetuity. You own that. That's how you fight back. You own your spiritual self. Man, you got to stand up against these spiritual gurus who are trying to charge you for a blessing. What? Get your hand out of my pocket. The American person is not a commodity or a battery for every system to try to use and abuse however they see fit. This is an abusive and a corrosive relationship. And I think that it's time for the greatest American lives to say, hell no, we're not going to take it. You ain't going to do this fuck shit to me. I think we need, it's about time for direct citizen input, right? Because after you vote and you put your politician in office, and then maybe you might have a town hall or maybe you can call them or maybe you can write them a letter or maybe you can go protest and march in the motherfucking streets. But that person don't have to listen to you. Not a, not never again until the next election. And then maybe on the next election, you might go out there and, and vote and voice your opinion and say you did a bad job and get his ass up out of office or get her ass up out of office. Or maybe the other person who they're running against. Fuck, man. How do you stand up against such an oppressive and abusive system? And if you think that you have the illusion of choice, then hell, if you can't speak for yourself, I don't need no goddamn representative to speak for me. Hell, I can talk. Eyes grown, motherfucker. I can use my mouth. Come here. The only problem is they ain't listening. And without the collective and collaborative effort of the American citizen, then hell, we ain't got no goddamn power. You need power to negotiate. Who's going to who's gonna negotiate on behalf of the American person? The American person don't need no superhero. You just need your motherfucking self, huh? Do your motherfucking part. Tell them, no, man, you ain't going to take advantage of me. Fuck that shit. I'm just asking questions. What kind of mechanisms do we have in America that keep perpetual poverty in existence? What the hell is a credit score and a credit report? And how do these people and how these companies get this information? Where did it come from? Did I say that you can have information about me? And then turn around and you're going to charge me for my information? Oh, shit, man, we're playing a nasty ass, explicit, dangerous fucking game. This is dangerous to the American person. How are we going to play a game when they can change the rules whenever they want to change the rules? Hell. They change the rules tomorrow. You don't know they change the rules. And all of a sudden, you got to play by the rules they created. Who in the fuck created the goddamn credit score and credit report? And what American person, what American citizen gave them authorization to know every detail about their financial and economic life? Who signed the consent? Who told these private companies that they can know everything about me and then sell me my information? What kind of game are we playing? This shit's explicit. I need, I would love to understand. So everyone tries to explain my credit score. Tell me, well, your FICO score is this and the higher it is, then, then you can go and get a loan. How do you have my information? And then how do you have the power and the ability to sell my information back to me? And then trade this information among other private corporations that talk about me behind my back. And I don't even know what the fuck you're saying and when you're saying it. I need to have ownership of that information. You need to be buying that information from me. I should provide you with that information about my private self and how I use my money and spend my money. Come on. I am a free person living in America. What kind of freedoms do I have? The right to vote? Hell yeah, let's go vote, right? And then after I vote, then what the fuck can I do? How in the fuck can I ensure this person does what needs to be done for me? Direct citizen input. Hey, you listen here. Come here, politician. I'm talking to you. 
God damn it, I, that didn't get done. Now go do it. Or I'm going to kick your ass on the motherfucking street immediately, nigga. You just got evicted from office. What's up? I know that they have procedures, but their procedures protect them and they keep you at a disadvantage. The greatest American alive, you have to fight back. As we're struggling and this shit is getting nasty, we're playing a nasty ass game. Economically challenged people, poor folks, or right now they're fighting a class war and they don't even know they're fighting. They're trying to abide by rules that keep someone else in power and they just keep saying, hell, this must be the name of the game. And since we don't know how to attack these mechanisms and leverages of power and levers of power that the system is using to keep us in these financially oppressed situations, we'll scream about some goddamn identity. I can't control shit else, so hell, man, they must not like me. It must be personal. But then when you find out that, hell, millions of other folks are, are fighting the exact same fight that you're fighting, then maybe if you had a collective effort and you said this shit's directly affecting all of us, and then you had a collective plan that said, hey, we're going to stand up for ourselves. And hey, you stand up for yourself, too. You tell that son of a bitch, hey, I'm not going to take this shit no more, yeah? I'm calling for motherfucking direct system input. I'm telling these sons of bitches right now on today, I own myself in the motherfucking, in the physical form, in the digital form, in the spiritual form. I own my essence and all of my impressions into perpetuity. And if you're going to motherfucking use me in any type of way, shape, form, or fashion, you're going to pay me some bitch. You ain't going to make no money off of my motherfucking ass. It's not going to happen. And the only way that you can protect yourself is you stand up and have some negotiating power. You need some motherfucking power. You need to know that you have power. Walmart ain't got no motherfucking power. Amazon ain't got no goddamn power. These folks ain't got no motherfucking power. You got the power. If I, if I ever use a movie reference, man, go watch the motherfucking movie. If you, have you seen Juice, go watch Juice. You got the motherfucking juice. These sucker-ass people, I don't give a fuck how big their guns are. They ain't got the motherfucking juice. This whole entire economy is built on you going to work. And the moment you tell these people to kiss your ass, I ain't finna do this shit no more for $7.75, and they gotta get right because you're the greatest American alive. And they're just hoping, just hoping that you'll maintain your patriotic duty to keep this beautiful thing called America going. But in order for us to uphold our end of the bargain, then they have to uphold their end of the bargain. Yes? Andrew Yang says, universal basic income. Well, Project Daddy says, Universal basic housing. What's up? And I ain't talking about no motherfucking project buildings. I'm talking about a pathway to ownership. Private corporations trading my information, talking about me behind my back. Hey, come here. I want that shit. We're playing a game. And they can punish us whenever they see fit. It's punitive. It's not, it's not informational. It's not educational. They can whip you if you have a bad credit score. Come here, boy. I need a pound of flesh. What's a pound of flesh? Nigga, that's my actual work, my sweat. It took me hours to get that motherfucking money. And you tell me that just because I don't know how to use this shit or play your game and I don't know the rules that you can take advantage of me, 18% interest rate, 28% interest rate. What's up on an inferior good? This is a fascinating thing, especially when we won't talk about economic oppression. They whooping your ass. But we could talk about identity. Hell no, it's all about the money. Show me the motherfucking money. If you ain't seen Jerry Maguire, go watch that dude do that thing. Show me the motherfucking money. That's it. Throwing change at the American person because we allow them to throw change at the American person. They can't take advantage of you unless you allow them to take advantage of you. Because they do take advantage of you and you don't say that you can, then that right there is a... I don't want to use that word, but it's the big ass R word. They took it. They took the cookie. You cannot take the cookie. That makes you one of those nasty people in Hollywood that takes the cookie and uses power. They're using power and leverage over the American person. Trading your information, talk about you behind your back, and then come back and punish you and say, you, you ain't good enough. Your credit score too low. We playing the motherfucking game, walking around smiling. I got an 820. Ha, 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 ha. I'm better than you. Nigga got the long face over there with the 430. I got a 430. I got to go down to the used car dealership and get a 1999 Ford Taurus. Now they're going to charge me $10,000 because they have to make the, the loan available, even though the car is only worth $2,000, and they're going to charge me 18% interest on top of that. Do the fucking math. And say, oh, it's the marketplace. You ain't got to do that. Bitch, I got to go to work, right? The bus don't run where I'm from. You hear me? I can't be at work on time. It takes two hours to get there using the public system. 
These inefficiencies, these mechanisms, these levers of power are used to keep you impoverished. And we ain't talking about this shit. Ain't no politician talking about this shit. You got to fight back, huh? Say, no, you're not going to criminalize and demonize the American person. The greatest American alive said, hell no. How do we fight back? Build, baby, build, God damn it. America's motherfucking breaking down. Look around. Crumbling infrastructure everywhere, potholes everywhere, mass congestion, mass traffic everywhere. There's so much work to be done. We could put the American man back to work like it ain't shit. When I say the American man, I mean the American person. Come on now. We can make America as great as we want it to be. Make America great immediately. Maggie, 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 like I'm watching The Simpsons or some shit. Let's do it. Build some motherfucking shit. Manifest destiny. We must go forward, yeah. We can make this thing as wonderful as we possibly can. American exceptionalism has to be real because we are the richest nation on the motherfucking planet. With one of the smallest populations, man, let's get busy. The numbers don't add up, but we can make the numbers add up by saying, hey, 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 respect my value. But in order for them to respect your value, I got to respect my value. You have to know and understand that you have all the power. You are the greatest American alive. And this geographic location is the thing that binds us all. I can't talk about no motherfucking race and identity and all this other shit. I'm a motherfucking American. That's it. Just an American. And I think that American people should get their fair share of America, right? You can't have a free and fair America if Americans don't own anything. This is the pathway to motherfucking actual citizenship, to be a fully vested member of the American society. Come on. I can lay my head at nighttime and rest in peace. I ain't got to goddamn take no, uh, no sleep aid. You know what's kicking my ass? These loans, home loans, student loan, car loan, motherfucking child support, taxes, beating the shit out of my ass. <laughs> I need some financial relief. And I need that shit immediately. Make Americans great immediately. Maggie, 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 and I ain't talking about no motherfucking Simpsons. Come here. I have ownership of my person, not only in the physical realm, the spiritual realm, the digital realm, and every essence into perpetuity. Put that shit in writing. For the American person, everyone has something in writing on the American person, but the American person has no contractual protection. You'll get a home loan. Sign a contract. 30 years, 15 years. They're guaranteed to get their money. You get with a car, man. Five years, six years, seven years. They're guaranteed to get their money. And you go to work every day and you just hope, man, maybe if I be good, maybe if I don't, maybe if I don't make the boss mad at me, I can get paid on Friday. And maybe if I keep getting paid on these Fridays, these Fridays would add up and I can pay my goddamn bills, but they have no contractual obligation to keep your ass at work. How does that shit work? Everyone else has a guarantee, but but you, your life is in jeopardy every day. You playing a motherfucking game with no goddamn insurance, with no motherfucking contractual obligation that says that you can continue to go to work for the next five years so that you can pay off your car or the next 15 years so that you can pay off your home. But every other business in America has contracts with everybody. But the American citizen has no contractual protection. Come on. We're playing a game, they're playing a game, and they're being explicit, and they're being extremely nasty, and it's okay for you to fight back. It's your patriotic duty to fight back. It's your right as the greatest American alive to tell these motherfuckers, hell no, I'm fighting back. There's a beautiful thing when I see people hit the, hit the streets. When I see these wonderful, powerful Americans, 60,000 deep, you name the city, marching and protesting on behalf of whatever the cause is. The greatest Americans alive stand together in unison whenever the duty, whenever it is required for us to do our patriotic duty. I love it. That's what makes America, that's what makes America great. That's what makes Americans great. As they love each other, they'll fight for each other and die for each other, goddamn. That's courageous. Now just fight for the right cause. Fight for your right to go to sleep at night in the same place for 30 fucking years if you choose to. But you want to be an owner in America just like American and every other corporation want to have ownership in America. You want you want you, you want to be fully vested. You want to be a fully vested member of this great ass society. Come on, man. Direct citizen input. Tell these motherfuckers this is what I want and how I want it. Hell yeah, I want that exact same shit. Hey, that shit you got from the bank. Hey, Bank of America. Come here, Bank of America. What, what, how big was the loan that you got? Was it 1%? 1.2%? All right, let's negotiate, man. I want that shit. I'll give you 2.2. What's up? You double your money. Let's go. 
Be fair, motherfucker. Be fair. <laughs> they say fair is a place where they judge pigs. America is a place where the citizen is free. And they have the autonomy to negotiate on their own behalf and to state their claim based on freedom. Based on the fact that I'm inherently valuable, that I own my physical, digital, and spiritual self forever and always, and you can't take that from me. That's beautiful. I ask myself sometimes, what is the American dream? And maybe the American dream is to be totally free, free from economic oppression, and then everything else will fall in line. <laughs> the greatest American alive. You are. The greatest American alive. I say it because it sounds so beautiful. It's not a revelation. It gets me excited to know that we're standing right at the precipice of the greatest renaissance the world has ever seen. When the American person has access to capital and they own the place in which they live and they're going to start building the most beautiful things the world has ever seen. When technology meets art and beauty and all of a sudden all of America can flourish and be that great shining beacon that's standing over here. And this geographic location that we like to call home. Make Americans great immediately. <laughs> the play on words is amazing. Yes, we can. Make America great immediately. The greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.